Hello YouTube, welcome to RC Ratgasser Garage where I'm going to be assembling this 32 Ford scratch built using my RC Electrics built an aluminum frame, going to show you how to do all this without having to do any welding, come up with a pretty badass ride I'm using a Traxxas Stampede transmission I've narrowed it down, I'm turning it around backwards I'm going to go ahead and put it in basically with the motor pointing forward <coughs> Oh, by the way, there's the other one I'm working on. That's the gasser part of the wrap part. I bought a bunch of these on eBay. I bought four roadsters. I've actually got a guy who's building me a 3D printed coup roof chopped the same as American Graffiti. But I've decided I wanted to build a slammed rat rod to begin with. Front axle, slam, you know, the whole bit. Pretty cool, but fully functional. And I'm going to do a little bit of a different approach, not using rock crawler axles. I'm going to use what everybody has available. And that's usually a spare trophy truck or buggy or whatever transmission or suspension. And I've got tires, wheels. I even built myself a little uh, garage on my bench here so I can take care of all this. And got a hurt back and so I'm kind of laid up a little bit. I build real cars for a living and I decided to go ahead and start doing that. When I decided I wanted to build this, I wanted to come up with something that you could buy readily. <coughs> this is called T-Metal. It's just basically it's a T. And it's what I've made everything out of. It's what I've taken and I've machined these out of just with my die grinder. And I've cut them down. But basically, as you can see, they're still T-Metal. And I started out using self-tapping screws just to get the things to set together. And then once I got everything fit right and clamped together, then I replaced stuff with, you know, some good stainless torques and, and just decided to go ahead and see what I could come up with. So let's see. Here's the frame assembled. I took that right there. It's another piece of T-metal. And I just drilled it, fit it, cut a couple little notches in it to keep it from moving. But it is just T-metal. Here's the same thing frame. Firewall is a piece of metal from a Harbor Freight ramp for the back of your pickup. Same as the back piece of aluminum that I just cut into a T. <clears throat> I've got one cross member here. I've got the transmission and everything screwed in. I have a couple more screws to put on, but it gets the general idea. What I did when I narrowed these tracks, this is really easy, but I took Russell arms and I put the... Uh, up here a little bit higher narrowed them in narrowed the axles all i did was cut them off drill a hole through them shorten them up to whatever width that i wanted it to laid the interior shocks over the interior made new shock tower their front shocks not that big of a deal pretty simple i'm going to go on to the front axle this is a great front axle it's out of a tamaya 114th scale semi truck jazz rider makes it um, I got the idea from RC every day. Love that guy. He does great stuff. I do have to point out one thing though. There is true Ackerman angle on this thing. And if you put this rod in the front, you will get wrong steering. And I'm not sure if you can tell this, but if you just look at and an Ackerman angle is inside corner is a smaller circle. Outside corner is a wider circle. If you turn this around and run it backwards with the linkage out front, your car will steer weird. It'll do great burn-offs and circles and the whole nine yards, but it will not drive like a normal vehicle. And you can look up Ackerman Angle anywhere, but that's basically the one tip that I have for putting these front axles. Is you've got to figure out a way to have them go on with the cross link in the back. And what happens, Ackerman Angle is actually from here to here centered up with the center of the rear axle off of both sides or it won't steer right installed the front axle and springs i used some heim joints just with some spacers down to a stud into the frame and you see those little tiny springs right there <coughs> hooked over the arms the arms screwed into that front axle are off my ascender truck but those little tiny springs are actually closed pin springs and they'll be buried under the grill i didn't want some great big thing showing through springs hanging out in front of something and they actually function and give me almost a half inch of travel next i'm going to address the motor okay. you could use a stock model monogram motor by the way you find these these cars from 
$50 to $250, depending on the completeness of it. But they come with a big block Pontiac. And um, this, they're a really nice looking motor. They come with a whole lot of chrome parts. We got lots of extra chrome parts. Got all kinds of things. But I wanted something just a little tiny bit different. <clears throat> and I knew the plastic motor wouldn't support my exhaust that I wanted. So I took a piece of C-channel aluminum. I added a couple of, uh, they were actually composite craft pan car motor mounts that held the back of the thing in. I made just a little aluminum flange. Same thing out of that same Harbor Freight chunk of metal I had. Um, got some brake line tubing, the really mollable stuff. Bent my Zumi pipes up. And of all things, I flared the end just a little bit with a screwdriver, kind of butchered them a little bit, but they hide and they're inside and you don't see them. And then I super glued the heck out of them. I glued, and I actually get a lot of focus here. There's a little screw that goes into the top that mounts them. And now they completely fit inside the car and hold up the headers. And I don't have to worry about the motor falling, you know, sagging because it's plastic. Same thing with my injection I'll get to in just a second. The motor's really highly detailed, really cool looking Pontiac motor. I've drilled a single hole in the bottom of it that goes clear into the oil pan. You can kind of see right there. Here's the transmission. And I just have a standard Torx head screw. And see the hole in the firewall? I sandwich them together, screw it in there, set the motor mounts in with the headers, and it's really simple. And that brings me to the fuel injection. Same thing, a little tiny piece of that metal manifold. Same thing as the firewall. It's just a piece of metal from Harbor Freight that I'm using for all kinds of stuff. More brake line tubing, some telephone wire, stripped on this side for the nitrous lines, not stripped on this side for the gas lines. And then the Pontiac motors that come in the models have this nice carburetor linkage, but they only have three carburetors. So I cut one apart and made a fourth carburetor linkage for the fuel injection. And uh, basically flared the bottom side and the top side, slid them through, super glued them. Super glue works wonderful on aluminum. Got my radiator hoses and my covers for my wires and the radiator hoses I use are just... Uh, just flex line for aquarium pump so um basically almost ready to slide the body on at this point when it comes to the body i went ahead and cut a hole in the side of the body for the servo mount and i used hot melt glue it works wonderful on plastic to plastic my little fly sky receiver fits underneath there i've got the three channel in case i want to put a noise module in it or a sound module as they say and uh windshield even folds down so it's uh, gonna slide the body on now here's where the steering comes through the body goes up to my linkage that's bent just enough so that I got tire clearance and I'm hooked to the front it's based down through and going back to the very center of the axle okay now <clears throat> this is why so now she steers very well both directions and has plenty of steering so I don't know why my focus is not right lately here but it just seems to keep getting off this is better now you can possibly see I just have a sprocket spacer on a servo arm up to the bottom runs back to the steering here works real well the thing steers and drives great. I've already had it assembled once and test drove it. So I'll go back from there in a few minutes. Got the wheels on it. Got everything to fit underneath the back. Motor's in. By the, right, by the way, I'm running a 13 wind double. And I'm running just a quick run. I'm actually a uh, crawler speed controller. So I have a little bit more control and programmability. <clears throat> Steering sucked up. Wheels are on. I went with a Kyosho. It was a Scorpion 2014 Repop 2.2 aftermarket. And then if you notice these wheels, these Goodyears, they're the ones that uh, RC Everyday talks about. You can get on eBay under eight scale models. Um, they're real hard, but boy, they sure drift nice and they're really fun. Um, you can see a little more of the patina from the other side. 
Uh, some more of the interior patina. By the way, I'm just going to show you the seat. There's my seat, my patina. It's even got actual real live duct tape. I don't know if it's live, but it's actual duct tape. Front wheels too. And then I'm running some good Hoosiers and inserts. And they're a front buggy um, to fit the uh, Kyosho wheel onto the spindle of the Tamaya. Um, I had to do a little bit of uh, bearing finagling and I ended up with a Traxxas bearing and it's a 5x8x2.5 by by and uh, seems to be working just fine. It's a little bit narrower than the normal one but it, it works out just great. So I'm real happy with that. Um, wheels by the way if you need to you can contact Kyosho America and the part number on those darn things uh, just because I do know it is um, SCH005 and FCH006 for the front and rear. Um, <clears throat> I think it's just about time to throw the battery in it, uh, take her for a little bit of a test drive, and then my next video I'll do all the finishing touches like uh, put the radiator in, put the grill shell on, maybe do a little more detail, get the interior all the way in. By the way, I do have carpeting for it and lights and uh, I've got a windshield with a nice crack that I'm going to put in there. It'll work out just fine. I'm going to hook all my hoses, gas lines, everything. And uh, just uh, give me just a couple of minutes and I'll go do a video of it, uh, test drive it in my kitchen. I'm starting. She's got quite a bit of power. This is the video for today. I'll get all the finished work done on the next video coming soon.